Action. Welcome to the Late Night Show, your monthly roundup of AI news tools and breakthroughs. Because somebody has to read the research papers. And let's be honest, it's not going to be you. August in AI has been insane. Google's dropping models named after a fruit. Meta's out here saying you can use AI in job interviews, which is wild because half of us are secretly using AI in our jobs already. Nvidia dropped a paper basically saying, yeah, small models are the future, which is convenient because none of us can afford the big ones anyway. And startups, startups are cranking out new AI tools so fast it feels less like innovation and more like speed dating. This one makes music, this one makes 3D, this one makes you question your career. So tonight we are cutting through that noise and here are 14 drops that actually mattered if you build, code or run a company. Let's get into it. Number one, Nano Banana. Google dropped Nano Banana. Yes, that's the real name that they used before actually releasing it. Somewhere, a billion dollar company's best mind sat around and said, hmm, let's actually name it after a fruit. Nano Banana was a code name for Google's latest image model that can let you edit images naturally in English. And here's the kicker. It keeps characters consistent across edits. Here's how you use it. Just go to Gemini, select Gemini 2.5 flash model, select the image option, and you're good to go. Talking about a few things this model can create, I made this sketch because I wanted to turn it into a YouTube thumbnail, and I uploaded a picture of mine. And Gemini 2.5 flash actually turned this into this, which is a pretty decent looking YouTube thumbnail. You could upload multiple pictures, let's say a person, another person, a piece of clothing and a background, and you'll get something that looks like this. Pretty insane, right? All of it is just with prompts. One of my favorites is this one, where you just upload a picture onto an existing scene, and you swap out the character, and using VO3, you can animate it. So you can pretty much star in any movie you like. And also, the most obvious use case, better LinkedIn headshots. This is infrastructure. For marketing teams, it means you can run multi-campaign mascots and product ads without praying to the AI gods. For startups, it means brand identity at scale without design budgets that look like NASA's. The bigger point, Google is not chasing the hype. They're solving the boring but critical stability problems that make AI usable in production in real life. You don't notice it when it works, but when it doesn't, it's chaos. Nano Banana says AI is finally eating its own dog food. Or fruit salad in this case. Next up, we have Hicksfeel Draw to Video. Hicksfeel released Draw to Video, where you take a picture and any product image onto it, and out comes a video that smoothly integrates your product into that video. Pretty cool, right? To use this, all you have to do is go to Hicksfeel AI, click on the Draw to Video feature, upload your initial image, upload whatever product you want to integrate, and write in a small piece of text how you want this product to interact with this image. And there you go, you have your outputs. Sounds playful, but let's actually zoom out. This is workflow collapse. Storyboarding, animating, rendering, gone. Collapsed into one model. For filmmakers, this is huge. Pitching a vision, don't show slides, show motion. But will it replace Pixar? Absolutely not. But will it make scrappy studios and startups look like they have an art department? Hell yeah. And remember, tech does not need to be perfect to disrupt. It just needs to be faster. Hicksfield made motion a primitive. That's not a toy, that's leverage. Next up, we have DeepSeek V3.1. DeepSeek V3.1 landed this month, and the reaction is shock. Because this isn't just good, it's really, really cheap. It comes with both thinking and non-thinking modes, and it's designed for agentic workflows. The US AI race is about bigger clusters and bigger models. China's countering with good enough dirt cheap, literally. And if history tells us anything, the cheap version usually wins. Android, TikTok, Windows. For engineers, the lesson is sharp. Efficiency beats brute force. Everyone can throw 70 billion parameters at a problem, but not everyone can do more with less. For founders, DeepSeek signals your next competitor may not be in San Francisco, but Shenzhen running models at a fraction of the cost. The AI Cold War is not about GPUs, it's about margins. And this ties in perfectly with what I'm about to cover next. NVIDIA's paper that says SLMs are better than LLMs when it comes to agentic workflows. The logic here is agents do not need Shakespearean creativity. They need speed, precision, and low cost. You don't need a sledgehammer to do a screwdriver's job. 
For founders, this is a roadmap. Don't default to the biggest models. Pick the smallest one that gets the job done. Efficiency is profit. And for engineers, it's liberating. Your side projects don't need GPT-4. A tuned SLM may be leaner, faster, cheaper, and actually more reliable. Next up, Meta lets candidates use AI in interviews. Meta announced job candidates can now use AI in interviews. Sounds progressive, right? We are meeting you where you are. That's pretty much what Meta is saying. But really, it's a test. Meta is actually saying, don't just code. Show us how you wield AI. They want to see you fight with an AI sidekick. Do you prompt like a surgeon, or do you just vomit questions into ChatGPT like a college kid who forgot their deadline? That's what it's about. This shifts the whole game. It's not lowering the bar, but it's actually relocating it. The new skill is not memorizing 200 lead code questions. It's knowing how to pair program with something smarter than you and not look like the intern in the partnership. Think of it like Pokemon. Everyone has a Pikachu now. The interview isn't about having Pikachu. It's about whether you know how to time a Thunderbolt instead of spamming tackle until your battery dies. Next up, GPT-6 rumors. What are we talking about? GPT-6 rumors are swirling, and it's a real thing. Supposedly training, supposedly massive, supposedly the thing that makes GPT-4 look like Pong. But here's the nuance. The hype cycle is peaking. Every leak, every whisper, every blurry slide screenshot is treated like UFO footage. Why? Because the market needs GPT-6 to exist, to keep belief alive that we are sprinting towards AGI. OpenAI leaks are like Marvel post credit scenes designed to keep you distracted until the actual drop. But for builders, here's the reality. Stop waiting for the next GPT model. GPT-4 is still more powerful than 99% of apps built off it. Next up, Copilot in Excel. For decades, Excel mastery was status. There are actual world championships on Microsoft Excel. You knew the formulas, the macros, the arcane functions. Now, you just ask it. This is both beautiful and brutal. If your value was, I know pivot tables, congratulations, the robot knows them too. But what's the upside? Business founders can now extract insights without analysts. The downside, your analysts better know strategy because the formulas are no longer their differentiator. This is skill compression, live on your desktop. Next up, Claude Opus 4.1. Anthropic dropped this model, which is faster, safer, and more balanced. Basically, the Switzerland of LLMs, neutral, calm, won't hallucinate itself into a lawsuit. It became the top model for about 24 hours. Then GPT-5 dropped and stole the spotlight, which honestly makes Claude feel like the guy who wins employee of the month the same week Elon announces mass layoffs. Congrats, but no one's talking about you. Still, for builders, this matters. Because GPT is like that brilliant but unstable co-founder who ghosts you for three days and then ships something insane at 4 a.m. Claude? Well, Claude's the steady engineer who documents everything and who does not break production on Friday. It's not sexy, but boring is how you scale. Runway Game World Beta. Now, this is something that I just added because I thought it was fun. Because it is fun. You describe a setting, the engine generates an explorable space. It's almost like you're talking to a comic book, but the comic book writes the story based on your decisions. You remember those Goosebumps books that we used to read when we were kids, where you choose how it ends? It's pretty much like that. You can just go to this link and you can start playing. You could actually type what setting you want, you could upload a character, and at every inflection point in the story, the model pauses and asks you for what decision you want to make. Right? It's pretty fun. What's the bigger picture over here? Well, it's definitely fun, but this could also be the first sign of an AI-generated MMORPG. Next up, 11 Labs drops two amazing things, video to music and 11 music. You feed it a video and it writes a soundtrack for you, something like this. Or you can just tell it to make music from scratch, something like this. Finally, someone realized that AI has been ignoring the sound layer. Text, check. Images, check. Video, check. But sound, that's kind of been left to royalty-free loops that sound like a robot's garage band. For content creators, this is a nightmare, or maybe even a dream. Because imagine 10,000 faceless channels, all pumping out original music perfectly scored to your cat video. That does sound like a nightmare. For companies and creative teams, it's even cooler. Instant jingles, custom band tracks, personalized soundscapes, all at the click of a button. Basically, Eleven Labs just automated one of the few human things we still brag about, creating music that makes people feel things. How do you feel about that, though? Next up, we have world models. Mirage 2, Genie 3, Matrix 2.0, and Hanyuan 3D. 
All of it launched in August. It's insane. It was a buffet of world models. If you don't know what world models are, think of it as playing a game. Okay, you have these controls where you can move forward, where you can jump, where you can interact with the world. But instead of the game being rendered in a game engine, it's a video engine. It's not a game engine. So every time you press the forward arrow, the video in front of you is being generated real time. Right? This is a thing. These are world models. It's insane. This is AI model not just saying what's the next word, but what's the next frame, the next object, the next physics simulation. You can check out some of these models over here. Some of them are open to try, some of them are not. All you have to do is upload an image. This is the bridge between words and worlds. Once AI understands environments and not just sentences, it stops being a writer and starts being an architect. Notebook LM video overview. Google extended Notebook LM into video. Instead of summarizing text and turning it into a podcast, which was popular for a while, it now summarizes and organizes video lectures. For students, it's a godsend. No more scrubbing through two-hour lectures to find the important points. It can condense key concepts, highlight examples, and make studying way more efficient. Essentially, it turns a messy video into a structured, easy-to-digest study guide, finally giving you time to actually learn instead of hunting for timestamps. All right, next up, TCS lays off people but also starts an AI unit. What's that about? So TCS laid off 12,000 people and announced an AI transformation unit all in the same breath. But the message is clear. AI isn't just a productivity tool. It's a part of how big corporations reorganize themselves. This is a real thing. You automate some processes and suddenly a chunk of your payroll disappears. It's a reminder that AI adoption is not hypothetical anymore. It's actually happening live. It's not theoretical anymore. It's on payrolls. And if you think it's stopping at TCS, you're dreaming. Next up, Quen's latest image model. So Quen launched an image model this month, and it's actually worth paying attention to. The model nails high-resolution images, keeps objects from randomly melting into each other, and handles tricky details like lighting and reflections. It also gives you style control, colors, textures, even a mood of the scene. Want a cyberpunk city at sunset or a haunted Victorian library? Quen's got you. And the inference is fast enough that you can generate dozens of variations before your coffee gets cold. What's smart here is that Quen isn't just chasing size. It's solving actual workflow problems. Consistent outputs, controllable styles, realistic details. It's a tool you can trust instead of babysit. Finally, generative AI that feels like a competent assistance and not a toddler with Photoshop. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was your August in AI. 14 drops, a fruit salad of models, and enough generative wizardry to make your laptop weep. We've seen tools that edit images without melting characters, models that turn lectures into cheat codes, and even AI that might quietly start replacing your Excel pivot table ego. It's a lot, but here's the takeaway. The pace is not slowing down, and the frontier is not somewhere off in a lab. It's in your browser, your IDE, and yes, probably in your spreadsheet. So whether you're building, coding, or just trying not to be replaced by your own AI sidekick, remember this, the future doesn't wait. But at least now, it comes with a soundtrack, a 3D world, and maybe even a banana. My name is Sridev, and this was The Late Night Show. I'll see you again, same GPU, same coffee budget, slightly more burnout. Bye.